Hey folks, this is Brian. We got a chance to play Far Horizons on Saturday. Sorry I'm so late getting this review out. I just started another, well, had a break during the summer because I didn't want to overlap classes. So I started my next class, number three. It's my first, uh, shoot, I forgot the word, optional class kind of thing. Well, anyway. So this was my first week of class. So I had two papers, two small papers. It wasn't really that big of a deal, but I was stressing <laughs> with everything going on and trying to get this done in time. Plus we had the game. So uh, it's Labor Day. I've got some time off this morning. Here's my video. Okay, let's see. Oh, Dylan's personal log, 20905. So the girl Kazinti, right now is starting to call her Kitty. <laughs> I ask her if she has any, and she tells me she has no name because she has lost her family and her clan and is without a house. So I'm thinking, well, maybe since you know I'm part of the clan and I've actually got property here, maybe I could make her part of my house kind of thing, reestablish some kind of uh, connection, authority, you know, for for her here. But while we're working on this stuff, we got to get some more samples. So we spend four days out in the jungle plant hunting. We find some, but we also find a dead herbivore who's been eating some of this stuff, or at least eating in the area where we're finding this stuff. Um, you know, where we've been tracking the, the plants we're trying to find, or the chemical makeup, place of the stuff we're trying to find. Anyway, the doc asks us if we can get samples um, and that we may want to sample the carnivore. Okay, so we pull what guts we can out of this thing and and uh, some of it's it's meat and headed on back. But this thing had uh, sucker marks and you know round teeth kind of things. This is one of the giant squid things that had gotten this beast. So we we make a couple of platforms in the trees and we set a drone up to watch if the beast comes by. We're, the idea is we jump in with contragrav and you know on top of the trees, <laughs> shoot it up. Uh, eventually, it does come back uh, and you know takes us a few rounds to shoot it up. I got it like one, two, three, four. Four shots in the gal's rifle. <laughs> tough, tough things. Uh, but uh, this new guy, Arthur, Arthur uh, he got a good blast with a blast rifle. That really helped. Right in, the, right in the noggin, it looks like. But anyway, when we take samples from the giant squid beast and uh, take it back. Oh, we have Doc come out because this thing is huge, right? So he takes the samples. And uh, he does some quick analysis there, and he says he thinks that he has enough now to synthesize what should be a cure for this uh, drug addiction stuff that's going throughout both sectors. And that now he can synthesize that, though no natural processes will be better. Yeah, right. We're, we're not going to. Harness a couple of these creatures and these plants and try and do this processing. Okay, so we get back to the ship. We start an start uh, analyzing the uh, uh, computer cores uh, for data because when we first got them, did a quick review and was able to find something. Well, anyway, as we're going through it again, I know it comes across a uh, a clip of a ship that is watching um, the ship that we're looking for. The kin Kinnear, Kinnear, whatever. The ship we're looking for, uh, you know, based on its, its VIN number and that kind of thing. So, well, it's VIN. It can't be VIN, right? First transponder, whatever it is, we're tracking these, via, these ships via. But anyway, there's video where um, there's a, a pitched battle here over over Omicron 5. Apparently, because Zinti has set, sent ships in trying to recapture the planet. And the Kinnear was here. Um, it takes some damage. Uh, well, 
a lot of damage. It starts to retreat, right? And then it jumps out of system. Well, within the 1,000 light seconds of where safe jumps, we're going, oh, shoot, probably just misjumped somewhere massive. But the ship's computer is monitoring all of this on the Kinnear, uh does have the uh, trajectory data on it. So the the pilot pulls out his stuff and works with the computer, and he does his pilot jumbo, and he's guessing that it went to um, planet Lothar, Lothar, Lothar 3, which is a bug world. Uh, um, Raynaud tells us, yeah, there hasn't been any bug, act, bug activity in the uh, sector you know, since the Corinth came in and subdued it, you know, some 700 years ago. Um, so we're thinking that Lothar 2 will be like Omicron 5, where you've got this uh, Corellian presence keeping things subjugated. And hopefully the bugs will be blasted back to the Stone Age like the Kazinti were. So, okay, so what do you do next? Well, let's finish this mission. Go to uh, Mitte to meet with Dr. Lund, deliver our cure, that kind of thing, and then we can, you know, go check on the ship or whatever. Uh, Arthur tells us some of his story. Apparently, he was in, he's from Mitte too, by the way. He's in a, uh, a taxi and gets gassed and wakes up in a cage on the wooden sailing ship. And we all look at him going, on a, a Carillion controlled Kazinti pirate sailing ship. Yeah, right. There's more to this. He's not telling us. Well, anyway, we do the jump to the Marquis Revenge. We do some dagger practice on the way. Um, and we transfer everything we need over to the Marquis. Uh, and then we uh, jump from this you know, place in dead space where we've got the ships hiding out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or open space, what would you call that? Anyway, let me jump to mid-day two. Um, while we're doing these jumps, uh, Katie's been bunking with Robin. And, uh, oh, she comes out and says, I've chosen a name. My name is Kira. Okay, so Kira has been bunking with Robin. And uh, so we're talking with Robin, me, Renald. Um, Cajun, and the other guy, I forgot his name, you know, you know the crew guys. One night we're just going, hey, Robin, you know, what are we going to do with with Kira now? Because obviously the, uh, the Iranian Empire has been at war with the Kazinti, you know, before the Koreans came in, right? So her just being in public would be an issue, period. Um, have they been seen in public? Yeah, but always as, you know, a trophy companions of uh, Karelian officers, right? I can't pass for Karelian. I'm not big. I don't have sharp, tiny teeth. Um, so, you know, what are we going to do with her? Essentially, she's, you know, a captive on the ship. Uh, and, and Rob, Robin tells us, you know, from her conversations with, with Kira that there is no place on, on Omnicron 5 for her, for Kira anymore. Because of their society. In fact, the Kira is, you know, speaks, <laughs> has the kitten, you know, all of these taboo things that are going on. Because uh, all of these witch, as I call them, witches, these people that connect with, with the kittens are witches. All these witches have, the Kazinti killed them all off. I thought the Karelians had, but apparently no, it was a Kazinti. Um, So we got to the common room, get everybody around. Okay, Kira, what what do you want? What can we do? How can we help you? You know, that kind of stuff. And she would like to get back to some kind of Kazinti land, but it would have to be a Kazinti who uh, used the ancient culture. Right, we're going to find that. Because apparently back, apparently the ancient Kazinti did things differently there. Um, and we're telling, we will do what we can to get you to your people somewhere. Well, one night while we're 
in transit. I'm woke in the middle of the night from a, a uh, intercom call. Someone has intruded in the air ducts. What? Oh, it's got a stupid cat. So I call Robin. Wake her up. Say, is the kitten there? She goes, I don't see him anywhere. But it's a joke because you know, it goes invisible. Okay. It, there's something in the air ducts. I think it's a kitten. We need to get it out and keep it from outside of the internals of the ship. So we go and investigate where it went through because, you know, it, it's a grill, right? <laughs> I don't think the kitten pulled out a pair of you know, the screwdriver and opened this thing up. And sure enough, there's been no damage to the, to the, the vent and it's been replaced completely. So not only are these things invisible, they can pass through stuff. <sighs> Raynald tells me that it's the Kazinti, that's, it's the cat that's the witch, and the Kazinti people are just, you know, familiars. <laughs> uh, anyway, we, we jump into system. Dr. Lind gave us protocols to, to enact. We do so. Uh, the control tower diverts us um, to one of the L5 or towards one of the L5 um, space stations. So we're headed that direction um, and we're intercepted by a, an authority shuttle that's coming to board us. They have permission to dock and board. Try to play it cool. We realize I got folks on my ship that aren't authorized to be here and shouldn't be here. So we we have a couple of the cargo containers, putting stuff all over the engineering lab, and we stuff uh, stuff. We put Kira and Arthur in, into a container. <clears throat> so unless they start busting through stuff, you know, they'll be safe. They're just out of the way. I think back ahead. You know, maybe if I just you know touch them and make them invisible, that might work. But we saw, well, it did work really well last time. Um, okay, so they board. Uh, two guys come in with combat body armor, one with a shotgun, another guy with a sword. They're looking around, uh, looking for trouble. You know, we're all playing cool. Uh, they, you know, they, they then relax off there and they go back into the shuttle. And Dr. Lind comes out. Thank goodness, Dr. Lind. Somebody we can, you know, trust. I think. Oh, no, we can't. I, I've had enough interaction with Dr. Linda. I trust him with a lot. I I've poured out my guts to him. Okay, so. Uh, Dr. Linda's war, we discussed the mission and some of our complications. Introduce him to Arthur and Kira. Uh, when he sees Arthur, um, he makes some calls back to his folks. And... Um, Talk about the the uh, we need to make sure we have contact with Tricorath because these two salvage guys are going to show up asking for money um, because of these computer cores and Dr. Says, Where's the contract? <laughs> we pull up the contract, you're filming your research, goes, I'll take care of this and we'll we'll take off any of the costs from our agreed upon compensation for the mission. You know, it's good to go, thank you. <laughs> take that off our hands. Um, Dr. Then gets gets some information back and asks if he can put some video up on the screen. Sure, yeah, go ahead. And he throws up the skin and it's a video of Arthur doing something. You know, you know, being out in town and thing. And Dr. Lynn looks at and asks, is that you? And Arthur says, No, that's not me. And then our and then Dr. Lynn says, We should probably restrain him until we find out who he is. <laughs> up against the wall, spread him, lock him up. He was fairly compliant, so it wasn't you know, a beat down or anything, but uh, yeah, he's constrained. And Dr. Lind asks him if he can have some DNA. And Arthur, you know, says, sure, we'll have at least swab, whatever. And then uh, he sends it off to his folks. Uh, so we're thinking, okay, next step of the mission is to get, them, get, get to the goblin, take the goblin to um, Lotar 2. And continue our investigation look for the kin here so i asked you know well marquis revenge has some has some battle damage on it still and, and it really needs to be in a dry dock and the tricorth guy said that you know, the tolls hey we're gonna put it in a dry dock we can fix it up so talk to him about okay if we do this can we get like a loner ship to take us over to the goblins we take it to where we need to go you know, make these arrangements kind of thing. He says, yeah, that should not be a problem. Um, 
Uh, we get the DNA back, and Arthur Miller is, in fact, Arthur Miller. Uh, and at that, Reynolds starts freaking out, going, dude, who are you? Why are you so important that somebody's going to gash you on mid day two, take you to control, to a Kazin, Kazin, the, uh, Karelian, a, control, a, a Karelian controlled system, and dump you on a Kazinti sailing pi pirate sailing ship? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there is something, something going on with this guy. But uh, Dr. Lin steps and says he is a citizen of the free world and has certain rights. And he says, hey, Arthur, maybe we should go talk. So they go back to the, the, uh, the medical bay and they have a discussion for a bit. They come back out and Dr. Lin says, I have taken his contract. He does infiltration and clandestine activities for data retrieval. Okay, so he's a spy that's got computer skills. <laughs> okay, can we use that now? Well, maybe not, but from the previous act he's been involved with, that, that's a bonus. Okay, so uh, Dr. Lin tells us that. Well, he, he's just discussing with his, his folks, but you know what? Let's just do this. He's going to block off a set of suites, private suites with some rec area, recreation area that you know, private, all closed off. Send us there. That way we can sneak Kira on board the station and then she's got free reign within some area. Sounds good to me. Um, and we do that. We get to our suites. Dr. Lind is, is talking. He goes, you know, when we brought Kira's pod aboard, I noticed a second heartbeat. <laughs> and at that, both... Uh, Arthur and Renaud Lurie go, she's pregnant? No! <laughs> and I tell Dr. Lynn about the kitten. And he seems really interested at that. And he asks, is there any way that, you know, you could see it or if you could bring folks to meet with Kira? I said, well, yeah, if Kira agrees to that. That's cool. We have no problem with that. But it's up to her. So he holds this little soiree in, um, I believe... Would have been a, a section of our private suites. Anyway, for a small group to come and have a little, you know, chit chat, try and see the kit and that kind of thing, right? And we get all introduced to uh, uh, these four folks. Uh, one guy, an old guy, obviously security. You can tell he's, he's carrying. Um, his name is Ari. And then these three other that are obviously. Uh, intellectual academic types you know that kind of thing uh, and then there's some discussion and at one point there's some ruckus on the table and we all look over and there's the kitten he's got some sushi in one paw and uh, some kind of meat in the other one and got something hanging out of his mouth looks about his stupid cat um but so everybody's ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, but the cat starts freaking and jumps and hides in some of the bushes, you know, the plants that are decorating the place. And uh, so I and, and Patricia, one of the one of the academics, have a little discussion about this because I'm asking about these kids. I've seen them everywhere. And uh, she mentions about how uh, in the past, um, Mitte too had colonized some of the surrounding planets, but because of things happening, communication was lost, you know, civilization drops, that kind of thing. And as they've gone reaching out again, they reach back to these colonies that they used to have. And they're finding these, these cat things there. And so we're having this little discussion about uh, these these kitten things. Begin encryption. Okay, stuff's going to go weird now. Uh, Reynold notices something going on with Robin. Um, I hear the kitten behind me start to hiss and freak out. And Kara starts looking around and her eyes are glowing all purple. So I'm looking around, seeing, okay, what's going on? What's going on? Do I see anything? Do I see anything? Don't see anything. Don't hear anything. So I start using the ring. Um, and the ring was given us to um, be able to identify people who might be receptive to our forerunner mission of, you know, taking back the galaxy, right? So as I'm doing that, I get a uh, possible receptiveness from 
Ari, the old guy. And as I'm doing that, he looks over at me, kind of smirks, and he goes back to his talking. Going, holy cow, something's up. So after the whole soiree thing is over, we're talking with Dr. Lind. Um, and I ask about Ari and he says, you know, why don't you ask about him? And I mentioned that something happened. Robin's getting a migraine, Kira's freaking out, the kitten's freaking out. And at that point, I got an odd feeling for Mari. Um, so Dr. Lynn, Dr. Swiss comes and says, can you come back in? And Mari comes back in. The kitten starts to growl. Dr. Lynn nods to Ari and Ari says, this meeting was not what I meant to offer, but to introduce you to the three of them, meaning the three other folks are with me, academics. But I saw an opportunity and the off chance there might be some talent here. So between he and I, we start talking around this whole psychic, psionic, special abilities, powers thing, right? And Rinald and um, Arthur are, you know, trying to freak out what's going on kind of stuff. And Arthur asks about, there's something going on with the church. What's going on now? Do we know what's happening right now? And Ari tells him, yeah, something's going on with the church. Things are changing. And um, at that, I look over it at, at uh, Reynold because I know these freaking communists, especially these churchy types, are going to be super paranoid about the whole psionic scene because, you know, the whole psionic revolution, they've always been persecuted against. That's the last thing that would have happened to me. So I've been hiding all this stuff as best I can while I've been working with, with these two. And so I put my hand on Reynolds' shoulder and eventually <laughs> um, it, it engaged my cloaking. So I go invisible to him. What's going on? But I'm still visible to everybody else, so there's some kind of confusion. What do you mean what's going on? But when I do that, Ari looks at me and goes, what was that? That was not psionic. So there's the big P word. He said it out loud. And I look at that like, can you really be trusted? Um, and he's like, yeah, of course you can. And so I ask Ari, what does he know about forerunners? He really knows as much as anybody knows. You know, galactic, ancient, you know, all that kind of stuff. I go, what about, what do you, what would you, what do you say about what everybody else knows? I go, well, what about someone who's met one? That his eyebrows go up. And I say, I have met one. This is a talent that she taught me. And at that point, I say, okay, all cards on the table. Everybody sit down, hold hands. We're getting a circle, all holding hands, sitting down, dim the lights. Okay, everybody meditate. And um, I eventually. Uh, Engage my engage. I may, I eventually get to commune with Maliki. Now she doesn't really show up here. It's just kind of a presence kind of thing, but things happen during communion, right? So um, we're communing. Ari is still meditating, but he's not connected necessarily. Um, Robin and Kira both make a solid connection. Um, Reynold and Arthur don't. So after a while, or Dr. Lynn doesn't either. So Dr. Lynn, you know, after a while, gets up, snaggers him to drink. Arthur and, and, uh, Reynold, yeah, go get some to drink. The rest of us are, are doing our thing. Eventually, I finished my communion and I stop and, and get up. Ari stops and gets up and says, what was that? What did I see? What, what was the present that she was running? Yeah. Says, yeah, what did I see? And um, we have a, a little bit of a discussion there. And Ari again mentions that there is potential for talent here. 
Uh, and he's talking with Arthur and Rinald and me. And uh, Arthur is very interested. Rinald says he has no objections to learn this because he needs to have something in his back pocket with dealing with the church. And obviously, I am already a freak. <laughs> Having some more aspects won't make any difference to me. I'm already keeping everything uh, hidden from everybody else. But he's telling us that, you know, this training will take time to master. So eventually, uh, Hira and uh, Robin uh, come out of, of their meditation. And... Uh, I kind of tell everybody, okay, I, I am here in this sector for two th reasons. One is to gain allies in the great war against the Iron Wind and Empty Sun. Um, I always thought the Iron Wind was fighting against the Empty Sun, but we'll find something out about that in a second here. I'll mention something about that in a second here. And for a more physical battle against the Karelians. And so some discussion about the Forerunners. Eric talks about, you know, most people date the Forerunner Collapse about 100,000 years ago. Um, but there's evidence that supports this idea that civilization has risen and fallen multiple times. And that 100,000 years ago is the reference to the last war of dominion and the subsequent long... The subsequent collapse of the long expanse of the Forerunners. Uh, Ari tells about, you know, there appears to be periods of stagnation for several thousand years kind of thing where it rises and, and collapses again. And in each case, there's a forerunner reference to the iron wind. And the techniques and knowledge that he has come from the knowledge he's gained from all this, this research and stuff. Every so often... Civilizations will start and it will climb and reach a certain critical mass, but then it gets shut down. And it seems that there are two forces in, in the universe. One is raising civilization up and the other is tearing it down. So there's lots of discussion about these forces. You know, some of the things I've seen, some of the things I've done. Uh, oh, it's at this point that, that Kira and Robin actually actually get out of their their uh, their, uh, their meditation and, and Robin looks at me and says I have no idea is it true well yeah yeah it is so we're not really alone are we they've always been here well I believe so so she's kind of on the edge of freakiness but Kira her eyes <laughs> which are, are glowing bright violet Then, then they clear, and she seems different. Like she's much more composed, much more in control, much more stable, um, confident, that kind of thing. And she says, we must destroy the invisible sun. It is behind everything. Well, maybe not everything, but what's going on now? Um, the invisible sun is behind the iron wind. They're the ones that are pulling the strings. And then Arthur says, is that an organization? And she says, well, it's more like a, a place. And then she goes to Ari, takes a, a glass of wine, puts her finger in it, puts a circle on the table and says, this is the void. Have you seen this before? And he says, well, they, they have found a book in some of their archaeological digs that has that symbol on it. She says, I would like to see that book. And it starts to Lynn, I don't think she'll give it up, but I'll see what I can do. And correct. And Encryption. Okay, so party's over. Um, Dr. Lin's guys have some stuff they want to teach us. And so we're now sitting back, okay, what do we do? Do we, we, do we hook up with Dr. Lin and his folks and do this research and archaeology stuff? Or do we go and get the kid in here? And personal log. So, wow, who? Almost 30 minutes. It was a long one, but it was it was an intense session. Look at all these notes. But a lot of it is because of, of data and communication, dialogue and stuff. It was great. Uh, my son, this was his 
second session with Bruce, and he was totally impressed with how Bruce ran his game. And Bruce is a great GM. We have we have a really good time. He's got he's got things under control and, and things happening at school. Um, but this is taken. <laughs> My plan for Dylan, for this section of scenario, is taking a major diversion. Um, but we'll see what kind of superhero he turns into. Happy gaming.